Hi, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the class. We're going to wait just a few minutes for the rest of the class. They say that there is no energy in some parts of the country, so let's help. Everybody can come. Hello, good night, everyone. Good evening, Jasmine. Welcome to the class. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Good evening, Osman. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class tonight. It's Wednesday today, and it seems that there are some problems of energy across the country. So let's hope the other people can come to the class. Anyways, we are going to start, of course, as usual, with the platform. So this is the class of today, and this is the question that we need to to answer for today. And uh, today there is no homework. So that is good. And well, we are going to check the attendance. Let's see how it goes. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. 
Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present teacher. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Wilfredo Guardado Present Rivera. Present teacher. Okay, Wendy. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. So this is assets risk when online shopping and we're going to read a little bit more risk assessment for e-commerce. So do you know what is assessment? What is that word? Assessment. Yep. Uh, it is when you have to, to take some, for example, you have to check some procedures in many companies or in many procedures about the, uh, for example, about safety, quality, efficiency, or in another company, for example, they have to, to, to make an um, uh, assessment to assure that the employees accomplish their procedures. Very good, perfect. So that is assessment. Assessment is like when you evaluate a procedure that for you to check if it's going well, of course. So uh, we are going to start reading. Wendy, could you please begin? Hello, Wendy. Commerce. Okay. Um, sorry, I can see good because it's my, it's, I stay in my cell phone. I see. Yeah, you can it's, go ahead. It's hardly an exaggeration to say that e-commerce saved uh, many lives and the retail in the industry. During, during the COVID-19 pandemic, allow cons consumers to buy groceries, uh, clothing, and other essential from the convenience and safety of, of their homes. In the USA, alone, e-commerce, <laughs> sorry, DJ. You're going well. Okay. Uh, 42% 42 from the previous years and the accountant for I teacher it this is difficult. 13.6 <laughs> of total retail sales. Sorry, teacher, que tengo que mover la izquierda, de izquierda, derecha y me pierdo. Okay. Of total retail sales in 2020. Survey showed that many consumers intend to continue shopping online, even after health, health and safety restrictions are lifted, which me, means the monu monumentum of digital shopping will continue. Very However, good. The, uh, that I'm is sorry. it. That is it. What will okay. be? What What do you understand on this first part? Uh, maybe is the this part is reference to when we 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 was in the um, restriction for COVID nineteen. Uh, the the we we uh, buy uh, the all percent the groceries and. 
and other things. Maybe sometimes uh, essential things uh, online. Uh, for example, we use uh, deliveries and, uh, and shopping online or on website. Okay, know. very well, perfect. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, after the pandemic and, and the restrictions are finished, uh, we still continue shopping online. So it's something that now we do, right? It's something that is not going to finish just because the pandemic restrictions has ended, right? So that is a good thing. Uh, let's see, Ricardo, could you please read the next one? Okay, teacher, permit a microphone. Okay. Okay, is however. However. Como? However. 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 There they very factory that's enable the rapid growth of economics. E-commerce. E-commerce. Access to customer, low barrier to entry and very four uh, plus seven availability. Availability. Availability or oh, ability of online platform also increases the exposure to a distant set of reach. Reach uh, that's cool. Determine the fact of, of the fate. new sorry the fate fate of new a uh, common solution. Here are some of their more pricing strategy and um, operation rights that Risks. are not relative fast sorry risks risks mm -hmm. risk that's online. Relative facts fight today. Face today. And they ask face today. And the action does reach race. Manager can usually to talk control of their reach rates include marking usage of relevant that um analysis. Analytics, okay. Uh, analytics. Analytics. Uh, what did you understand on this one? Is um consumer is um, a proportion of a new a commercial is a uh, some on their more pressing a strategy is for operation is a uh, marketing. Uh, it's a new, uh, new uh, form of como es? Uh, way. Way, ways in marketing online is a product, economy is a como sería para tener más ganancia sería to get more profit. Es eh, eh, turismo, ¿cómo es? Get more profit. Get more profit for, for me. Okay, very well, perfect. So yes, uh, if uh, of course something increases, I mean, if the shopping online has increased, of course uh, their risks have increased as well. So we're going to check into that one. But for, first of all, let's check some, some vocabulary. Let's see, barriers, what is barriers? Okay, barriers is like obstacle, something that stops you doing something. That is a barrier. Availability, what is availability? Be available. Something that is available, something that you can get, right? So that is it. Uh, let's see. 
What is exposure? Exposure is when it's like show. Show us. Very good. Exposure. Yeah, I, expose, I expose my my life. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Very good. Something. Yeah, that is a good one. So it's similar to show, to show something. In this case, to the public. Uh, what is fate? Fate is like destiny. Destiny, yeah, that is it. I like the destiny. And uh, I guess that is it. So it says a risk assessment checklist for e-commerce. So the first part is strategic risks. So Osmin, could you please read the first one, number one? Okay, teacher. Okay. Credit cover consumer pay. Okay. Buying channels will are kindly, certainly, certainly, see, certainly, a growing, thank you, teacher, share of consumer traffic to you to him first store, but the, but the extents of this shit, uh, shit and the rule of risk and more for setting remains to be seen. Lower switching, lower switching comes have under, under, under midnight. And undermine, 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 okay, bank loyalty and family consumer are making, uh, making it even more difficult to projects. How, where, and from whom online consumer will buy. The predictable what is concessions? Unpredictability. Unpredictability of the post pandemic uh, commissioner retail than this land, landscape. Landscape uh, means that. A commerce player needs to be prepared for a range of future scenarios. Very good. So, what did you understand on this one? Mm, it's, it's, a, a, it's a form preventive for eventual situation in the future. No. Or yes, no, no understand. Good. Uh, yes, actually, it says uh, well, just by the title, you can say that sometimes uh, the people, the customers, they act in different ways. We don't know what they are going to do. We don't know what they are going to try to buy. So we need to be ready about that one. That is a risk, definitely. So we need to take in consideration that even if we have wonderful products. Maybe the customers, they are not coming or they need something that is a little bit different. So uh, that, is, that is what it says. So let's check some vocabulary here. Um, let's see, there are not many words. Do you remember what is brick and mortar? Brick and mortar. It's the store. Is okay. the place that we can visit to buy something. Very good. It's like a physical store, right? Nice. Uh, undermine. Uh, by any chance, do you know what is undermine? Okay, that is like causing an, an impact, a negative impact. 
in this case, in the loyalties of the company. Uh, so maybe the question here is what is loyalty? What is that? This client place A. Customer place A. Yeah, it's like when the customer they are always there, right? Very good. When they they look for your brand and things like that. So that is it. Good. Let me see. I guess there is no other one. So number two is for Carla. I'm Carla. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, okay. go ahead. Okay, the pronunciation the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please ask, ask the question. Can you repeat pronunciation the word unpredictably and yes? Yes. Unpredictability. Unpredictability. Unpredictability, yeah, unpredictability. Okay, thank you. Okay, very well. Sorry, Carlos. Okay, thank you. Uh, rep, reputation, reputational risk. With the many options and easy access to information, discerning online consumers are high, highly attuned to their reputation and the values of e-commerce brands. A handful of highly visible negative or positive reviews can dramat dramatically shift demand in an instant. A single advertisement can stock backlash that re reverberates across social media. In this dynamic risk environment, commerce players must protect their reputation with a proactive customer service strategy and shape their digital identity to appeal to a, new, to a new and more critical generation of online consumer. Very good, what did you understand? <laughs> I understand that the reputational risk is a is a important part in a e-commerce brand because is is very important that that all e-commerce have um, a strategic for uh, any risk risk in the business. Definitely. So when the people start saying, "Oh, that place is not good," of course. Um, even if it's not true or even if it's about one, th one thing that happened, I mean, people will stop buying in that place. So that is, that is totally true. Some words, uh, discerning, what is discerning? Discerning. Mm. I'm sorry. Like the pure. Mm, discerning is like making a decision, so you are able to decide where to go, where where to buy in this situation, but you can decide about this or this other option. It's a it's a like a selective customer or selective. Any yeah, it's when they select things that they can do, of course. So uh, it says attuned. Uh, what is attuned? Tune is like, um, oh my God, sin, sinto, no. yeah, it's like, <laughs> tune is um, when you, when you tune something, you look for a, a radio. In a tune, oh my God, how can I say? Sinton, sintony, sintony. Oh Probably my God, I can. You can say sync. Sync? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, this is like, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the consumers, the customers, they, they look for 
the values of the company and they uh, try to align to their values, right? They always purchase to companies that they are similar to you. So that is it. It's like adjust. Adjust, yeah. You adjust, to, in uh -huh. this case, to the values of the company. Uh -huh. A handful, what is a handful? A handful is like a bit or I don't know. When handful is handful, when we have a lot of things, I think. Very uh, good. Yeah, it's handful. Uh -huh. We have a lot of things. In that case, a handful of highly visible. We have a, a, a lot of highly visible or positive reviews about it. The, the business, I think. That's very good, very nice. So that is like a handful is a number of something, but it's, you don't say the number, right? It's a bunch of, okay? Something like that. Let's see. Um, blacklash. Um, do you know what is a blacklash? Actually, that is a word that I didn't know, but it's very strange, the definition here. So what is blacklash? So that is like an adverse reaction to something, um, in this case, in the media. So it's something that um, we need to be careful because if we do something that people don't like, people is going to react negative to that one. That's why it says reverberates. So it's like a negative reaction that reflects in the social media and everybody will, will know. So nowadays, with the social media, uh, I mean, somebody can say something and it's going to, it might become vital. It might destroy your business actually. So that is something that is very important. Uh, let's see what else. I don't think there is another one. Okay, so reputational risk, of course, if you don't, if you're not careful about your reputation of the business, of course, that may cause a negative impact. Okay, competitive pressures. This is for Lourdes. Okay, competitive pressures. The low barrier to entry present both an opportunity and a treat to new e-commerce solutions. In an era of increasing consolidation, uh successful okay. successful e-commerce retailers are becoming a, an attractive target for larger companies such as Amazon and Walmart who experienced the largest gains from the e-commerce boom last year the 10 largest retailers accounted for 68% of all USA US e-commerce yeah. sales with Amazon representing more than half of online sales. This established established retail giants can leverage their size, scale and existing digital platforms to dominate the market and continue to pose a risk to a smaller e-commerce shops. Very good. What did you understand on this one? <laughs> um... Uh... <laughs> 
help me, teacher, please. <laughs> Actually, this is a, a very easy one. I mean, competitive pressures mean that when you have a platform that is a store online, I mean, you are going to compete with large companies such as Amazon, Walmart, and things like that. It's very difficult to compete with them. So, and mm -hmm. they have many kinds of products good pricing, mm -hmm. delivery. I mean, they have a lot of things. So if you are going to have a, an online store, an online e-commerce uh, company, of course, you are going to have to compete on that one. And that is a risk because you need to do things very well to provide something good to customers so they don't go to other large companies. So that is it. Okay, let's check some words. Do you remember what is threat? Like a deal? Like a? A deal? No, that is treat and this is threat. Oh. Okay, so what is threat? It's a menace. It's a manage very well. So it's something that may cause danger to your business, right? Let's see, uh, what else? Do you remember what is a target? Target. Objective. An objective, very good. A goal that you have, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see what else. I don't think there is any other. Gains, teacher, what is the meaning? Okay, very good. Uh, gain is like, like winning something, but when you win, uh, there are different uses of the words. Win is like when you win in a competition or in mm -hmm. a sports thing. Gain is when you work for something and gain profit, gain weight, gain something mm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, there are no other words, I guess. It says last year the 10 largest retailers accounted for 68% of all US e commerce sales, with Amazon representing more than half of online sales. So, in mind that Amazon represents more than half of all online sales in all the country, in all the US. Of course, that is a lot, a lot. Now we're going to check about operational risks. Okay, let's see. Uh, Susana, could you please read this one? Okay, teacher. Operational risk, cyber risk. The most obvious risk to e-commerce solution is rising cyber threat. Last year, there were estimate 65,000. Good. Okay, successful ransomware attacks one every eight minutes on average. An expert predict that it will only get worse. As online retailers grow the business, they become bigger targets for cyber criminals and need to project, protect themselves and their customers by invest, investing in the appropriate cybersecurity measures, such as employing multi-factor authentication, keeping system packed and up to date installing detection and response tools, preparing a third-party incident response team and creating a security digital culture. Good, what did you understand on this one? I think the, not always e-commerce is safe for your information. <clears throat> and I think the, this place, um, look forms for protect your information because they need the vice make sure if not you never go back to there okay perfect yeah cyber risk is something that is uh, handling a lot of problems for uh, all the e-commerce uh, businesses i mean uh, the cyber uh, criminals that are like hackers, they want information from credit cards from customers. They want our information or our um, uh, 
front end piece of uh, platform so they can try to steal some information. So it's very dangerous. Uh, it says here, mind, the most obvious risk to e-commerce solution is rising cyber threats. So threat, do you remember that is a menace? It's a danger for something. So there were an estimated of 65,000 successful ransomware attacks. So there were, in mind that amount of attacks only last year, that is a lot. A lot of people is trying to get money in an easy way. So the first question here is what is ransomware? Maybe we can check only ransom, ransom. Uh, and we can analyze ransomware. Ransom is when somebody, oh my God. <laughs> it's like a, oh my God. <gasps> a kidnap, the kidnap, right? yeah. Very good. So it's the, like the ransom is when someone is taken by the force and exactly. so getting something. In that case, the ransomware is, it's a ransom, but in technologic, technological meaning, I think it's a, oh my God, uh, it's like a ransom, but the data. That is it. I mean, they, the hackers sometimes, that, for example, have you read or did you read this week that in Costa Rica, they were uh, in, I mean, they were, they were attacked by hackers and the government were, was attacked by hackers and they say that they were going to do so many crazy things. So that is ransomware. Ransomware is when hackers, they try to take control of your servers, of your platform, and they steal information from that one. So that is not good. Uh, and if you are going to have a, an e-commerce business, of course, that is a risk, definitely. Uh, what is, let me see. Let me see if there is any other word here. Oh, 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 I don't think so. Patched? No. Uh, patched, okay. So a patch is like a security uh, level that some companies do in the software. When they patch something, it has a security patch that is going to avoid the system to be stolen by somebody else's. So it's like um, like another software that is linked to the main software. So protect, to protect that one. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, this is a good one. Pre-arranging. So what is to pre-arrange? Something that is previously arranged. Yeah, very good. Something that is previously arranged. So in advance, you think about something that might happen and you you are prepared for that one, right? Good. And it says, well, this is like the same. Last year, there were an estimate of 65 successful ransomware attacks on every one every eight minutes, in my on average. And experts predict that it will only get worse. So a lot of people are trying to get money for free. Good, the next one, it says supply chain disruption. This is going to be for Gloria Elizabeth. Hello, Gloria. No, Gloria. Okay, Ada Patricia. Okay, teacher. Supply chain disruption. Supply chain resilience has taken on an additional level of importance and visibility since the onset of the pandemic. And this is even more true for e-commerce solution. For a business model that revolves around customers being able to place an order 24 seven? Yeah. And expect next day or 
even same day delivery. It becomes even more crucial to monitor and mitigate any supply chain and distribution risks. Online retailers that source their products offshore also need to pay special attention to geopolitical risks that may affect their supplies or their supplies to place. Very good, perfect. So what did you understand on this one? Not teacher. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of easy. So this is related to logistical. Remember in the last module, we were discussing about logistical and well, uh, well, if the supply chain has a problem, we are not going to be able to deliver the product on time to our customers and customers are going to be angry. They will be calling you. They, uh, there will be a lot of problems. So we need to pay attention in that one, not only uh, to well, you need to be ready in advance. Before something happens, we need to be ready about what might be happening. And uh, well, the last part is interesting as well. So we, ha if the companies, they, they are making business uh, with other countries, they also need to be careful about what is happening in that country. I mean, uh, if there is going to be a war or if there are social problems, Sometimes unions, they close the frontiers and you are not able to transport anything. So that causes a problem for you as a company. And uh, of course, you need to be ready for that kind of situation. So let's check some, some words. Let's see. Okay, on set is an easy one. What is on set? In the place in the moment maybe yeah it's like a setup right so since the onset of the pandemic means that when the pandemic was set up imposed good let's see any other results customers being able uh, oh. mitigate what is to mitigate It's like reduce. Mm, like reduce. No, when, when we mitigate, oh my God, I'm thinking in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the word. Oh my God. No, no, maybe no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mitigate is like when uh, when you decide to, to stop something to happen. Yeah. Uh, something like it's that. It's like a prevention. Prevention. Very good. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good. The other one is offshore. What is offshore? Okay, offshore means uh, in other countries, so out of your frontiers. So that will be offshore. Okay. Um, we found that geopolitical is about the society and political problems that might happen in a country, right? And that is it. So let me see. We're going to continue. So this one is going to be for Nelson. Hello, Nelson. Hello. Yeah. Ah, okay. Even now. Um, how, how to manage and mitigate the income crisis? Harness the power of the, the date and analyze the user case for date, the touch, that, and analyze to help predict 
and mitigate the common rights are enumerates, enumerable. 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 Companies can live, liberate. Leverage. They leverage. They. Uh, that is data or data. You can say that in many ways. Data or data. Data or data are essential to analyze purchasing. Purchasing. Purchasing mm -hmm. habits, Good. projects, consumer behavior, behavior, and personally, the digital shopping experience. Artificial intelligence and data mining. Mining. Mining technique can map of a comprehensive view on entire supply chain. University, university, don't the people believe supply, suppliers, suppliers, and more, suppliers, and the model, the risk implication, sentiment analysis and natural, natural language processing tool can also be used the analysis only review and customer service card. Generally, generally. Generating. Generating and sign in customer tree that can inform a more agile. What is the pronunciation agile? Agile. Agile. Customer service strategy. This unprecedented amount of data coupled with the analysis capability to attract and synthesize it synthesize it synthesize it well in progress or in commerce solution to continuous continuously monitor their k lady and lighting rights indicator with provide with provided a critical signal to help sign prepare, sign up to help prepare it for a mitigate impediment right okay well, what did you understand in this one well uh, in, in the in the diet in the basic diet analysis uh, 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 the uh, the company help and the and the server or, or, or the platform and help a uh, uh, mitigate 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 the the uh, 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 someone right in the commerce in, in, in the in the electrics or e-commerce. I think very well. That is it. I mean, so. It's, it's like when you have data and you are able to analyze data, that is going to give you the power to decide what is better for you. So that is something that is very, very important. And uh, I mean, uh, in any business, information is, is very important, but not only information. So to analyze the information and decide what is going to happen and prevent, decide and prevent are two very important things, not only in e-commerce, but also in any kind of business. Let's check some words, very good. Uh, we know what is mitigate, innumerable. This is very easy, this is like in Spanish. That is exactly as in Spanish. Only the pronunciation is innumerable. Uh, leverage, remember the pronunciation is leverage. We know what is that, uh, behavior. What is behavior? The attitude. The attitude, very good. The way that somebody or a system or a computer acts. Okay, so that is very important. So, uh, data mining. You can say this word data or data. That is not a problem. But what is data or data mining? Is light or information the 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 the, 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 the 
the information this uh, in in the analysis in the in the platform on the server because the the help but uh, provide uh, any race very good that is it so data mining it's referred to the way that you are going to get recollect data right and then analyze that so uh, that is map out actually map out is when you analyze when you decide what is important for you and then analyze what you can do with that information uh let's see then to third degree supplies let me check if there is any other word because this is a long paragraph the one that nelson read um i don't think so but i believe that you know these words um yeah there are no other so plan for multiple scenarios that is going to be for jose ernesto Good evening, teacher. Good evening. A plan for multiple scenarios. Okay. Uh, assessing and quantifying the risk is only the first step. To take it one level further, e-commerce players need to pre prepare their response to a range of catastrophic risk scenarios. How would you respond to an online audit or ransomware attack? What actions would you take if your primary supplier were blacklisted? And how will this affect your consumers? What would you do if a influx of negative reviews significantly reduce consumer demand? These are the questions that e-commerce risk manage, managers should be prepared to answer and to revisit at regular intervals to keep peace with volatility in the digital retail space. Very good. Space. What did you understand on this one? Uh, I understand uh, the companies must consider um, favorable uh, scenarios to reduce the uncertainty in in the face of attacks on their websites and they must also create a action a, how do you say protocols in english teacher a protocol okay create action protocols to to reduce response time to protect their customers and, and themselves very good. Yeah, actually, yeah, we need to plan. Uh, the topic is very important. Plan for multiple scenarios. You need to be ready for many things that may happen. The most craziest things that might happen, you need to be ready for that one. So definitely, that is it. Um, assessing, what is to assess? Anybody? It's like evaluate. Evaluate, very good. That is similar to evaluate. Uh, let's see what else. Um, it says online outage. What is outage? Okay, outage is like a stop in the service. For example, today I, I knew that there were some problems with the energy. So you, we can say that we have a power outage. We didn't have outage at some point. So that is a stop in the service. So in this case, a stop in the online service of internet, let's say. Blacklisted, what is to be blacklisted? Okay, blacklist is uh, something that happens in e-commerce. I mean, not in e-commerce only, but uh, related to business online. And what happens is that sometimes there are some companies that they are making suspicious activities. Uh, sometimes they make fraud. Sometimes they send massive emails 
that are like spam, many things <laughs> may happen. And whenever that happens, other companies, they blacklist that company. So that means that, for example, for emails, you are if your company is blacklisted, if you send an email, it's not going to be received by the other company. Uh, in this case, blacklist company, in total, the company means that something happened to that company and nobody is going to buy for, from them. So it's, it's a big problem, actually, that one. Uh, let's see what else. Influx is to, to flow into something, to, to manipulate in one way uh, how things might happen. So, and that is it. The other one says, look for the upside of risk. And this is the last one for this part. So this one is going to be for Wilfredo. Hello, Wilfredo. Hello, teacher. Good. Excuse so, me, excuse me. That I, I am in a right. I, at home, but tell me, tell me. Uh, can you read or you can't? Now, teacher, now. Um, about look for the upside of risk. Yes, please. I'm okay. The risk, the risk that e-commerce solution face may seem daring, but they also so also sustain the condition under with online re retailer thrive in response right. to the to the fluid fluidity, fluidity of consumer preference and the competitive landscape e-commerce retailer have been well positioned positions to adopt agile practices and quickly quickly recalibrate their business model to meet changing changing summer expansion while e-commerce retailer are more vulnerable to al algorithms and let me see that the the wind of social media they also have the flexible to reinvent their brand and identity 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 much faster than a retailer with a physical footprint all in all in all this risk come with extraordinary extraordinary upside and the potential to create lasting value in the market good what did you understand on this one mm, i i guess teacher that the company has to look for when they guess they can get some risk about um, about their business business for example but I, I don't I don't be sure because I don't I don't I don't I don't have enough knowledge about this this item. Okay, perfect. That is not a problem. Yeah, I mean you need to look for any risk that might happen in any situation and any part of the process before, during, and after you sell the product. So that is very important. Uh, okay. Good. Let's check some vocabulary, everybody. What is daunting? Okay, daunting is, is an adjective that means something that is hard to manage, difficult to manage, something like that. Uh, it says, but they also sustain the conditions under which online occurs. Thrive. So what is to thrive? I was looking is and it's like pros, pros, prosper. Very good. Yeah. To, to prosper, to boom, to have more, more profit, right? Good. Uh, fluidity. So this is like the flow, okay? The way that 
the people flow in this case, fluidity. Let's see, landscape, what is a landscape? Like landscape is a, a view, a view, a sizing, oh my God. It's like a pano, can I say pan, panorama? No. Panorama, yeah, very yeah. good. Oh, it's like a panorama. It's like a view. You see the, uh -huh, it's like a view. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice. And it says agile practices and quickly recalibrate. What is to recalibrate? Okay, For example, teacher, go ahead, go ahead. teacher, when, when uh, it is like when you have to retrain about some procedure or, or assessment. Very good. When you need to change, when you have a standard and something happened and then you need to change the standard. Okay, so very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the pronunciation of this one is algorithms. Of course, you know what is an algorithm, right? This is about math. Uh, reinvent. Uh, I know that you know what is that. Of course, um, footprint. What is footprint? Um, the mark that our foot uh, oh my god the, the mark that our foot uh, <laughs> when we walk for example in the sand and we we our feet are marked in the sand that are footprints very good perfect that is foot nice okay Nice, my friends. So uh, we're going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance. Nice, nice, nice. Here we go. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Here, teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Very good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posa de Reina. Good evening, present. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present. Good. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Perfect. So this is the week of the videos. We're going to watch a little video. It's not that large this time. Yeah. Okay, Walter, no problem. I got you here. So uh, this is an interesting one. Let's see how it goes. 10 online shopping hacks everyone should know. Okay. So uh, as usual, we're going to watch the video and then we're going to provide feedback, comments, and what you understand. 
here we go. Thanks to online shopping, we barely need to leave the comfort of our cozy apartments anymore. You can buy anything from a discounted Louis Vuitton purse to bulk packages of toilet paper online. But are you making sure to take advantage of the many tricks that make shopping online much easier? If not, keep watching until the end to see how your online shopping addiction can be considered to be a form of charity. Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Now here's 10 online shopping hacks everyone should know. Honey. As amazing as it is to be able to have everything delivered right to our front doors, this simple convenience is costing us way more than we'd all like to admit. But did you know that there's a free Google Chrome extension that can help save you a ton of money? According to the website, Honey will automatically apply the best coupon code at checkout. This means you never have to spend time searching for a code ever again. Now doesn't that sound like a dream come true? Time Magazine has even proclaimed that this extension basically gives you free money. Not only does Honey find promos for you, it can also earn you cash back. The amount that you can get awarded for buying a product is always different and can range anywhere from 0 to 100%. We don't know about you, but the possibility of getting 100% back on a purchase is enough to turn us into loyal Honey users. While this extension was originally created for Chrome, you can also download it on our Safari or Firefox browser. Honey doesn't even discriminate against the type of online shopping that you do, and it'll even help to find you a discount on your next Papa John's delivery. Plus, if there aren't any discount codes available, you you still have a chance to make cash back if you buy the product through Honey. We suggest that you try it out for yourself ASAP, or at least right after you finish watching this video. Hey guys, we are so excited to announce we are producing our own original content. Head over to the Trendy for the best DIYs, fashion tips, makeup hacks, and so much more. We are sure you're going to love it, and be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you there! Amazon Filler Item Finder one of the few downsides to online shopping is that you usually have to pay shipping fees. Unless you're buying something from a company across the world, these fees usually average to be $12. It's not a huge price to pay, but it's still super annoying. If you're a local Amazon shopper, this next hack is going to save you from spending money on shipping, which will give you more cash to spend on the things that you really need. If you don't have the $35 minimum for free shipping, you need to check out Amazon Filler Item Finder. All you have to do is type in the amount you need to qualify for free shipping and the website will give you a list of products at that price point. If you end up finding something that you want to buy, just click on it and you'll be redirected to the item on Amazon. While Amazon does make suggestions based on items you're already searching for, their suggestions just don't compare to the ones on Amazon Filler Item Finder website. We don't want to end up paying $35 for something when we only need exactly $13.50 to get the free shipping. The best thing about this site is that it is also completely ad-free. This means that you won't be tempted to buy a gazillion other things while you're trying to complete your Amazon order. Polyvore. Most die-hard fashionistas already know about this next time-saving online shopping hack, but if you're just an average person with below-average fashion sense, like us, this next bit of advice is going to change your life. One of the biggest problems we have with online shopping is the fact that we have to go on to so many different websites to find what we want. Wouldn't it be so much easier if there was just one website that showed off different options from all of your favorite stores? Luckily for us, a website like that already exists, Polyvore. A description from the website says that Polyvore is a community of tastemakers where people can express their style and set trends around the world. Fashionista users share their favorite looks on their page and even link the items so that you can buy them online. It's especially perfect for those of us who can't put an outfit together to save our lives. But the greatness of this website doesn't just stop there. You can also browse through thousands of dresses, shirts, and pants that are sourced from hundreds of different clothing companies. And the the best part is that you can buy all of your favorite brands in a single transaction. No need to worry about retyping your credit card number a bunch of times on several different websites. Polyvor makes online shopping so easy that it's almost too easy. Gift cards. According to the National Retail Federation's holiday projections, over half of consumers are planning to give gift cards as gifts during the 2017 holiday season. We're not sure why anyone would dislike receiving a gift card, but it's reported that nearly $1 billion in gift card value goes unused every year. But the fact that people don't want to use their... If you want to sell online, make sure you stand out. Go to Wix e-commerce.
Use their gift cards can actually help you to save money. There are websites like Raise, ABC Gift Cards, and Card Kangaroo that let you buy people's unwanted gift cards at a discounted rate. You can get up to 35% off a card of your choice, which we all know is a great deal. Why pay $100 at Macy's when you can buy a $100 Macy's gift card for less online? Plus, if you couple this gift card hack with a promotion on your favorite website, you can save even more money. And if you have an unused gift card collecting in your wallet, you can always sell it to one of these sites for cash back. Most gift card resellers will pay you up to 92% of the card's face value. Your Nana definitely meant well when she gave you a $50 gift card to Old Navy, but you might as well sell it if you're never going to use it. It looks like one man's trash really is another man's treasure in this case. Free returns. We'll be the first to admit that we get a little teary-eyed whenever we see the words free shipping while shopping online. But as much as we should be happy about not paying silly shipping fees, we should also keep an eye out for stores that offer free returns. In fact, you should be taking advantage of free return policies to ensure that the clothes you buy are a perfect fit. According to a study done in the UK, 41% of consumers buy clothing in multiple sizes online and then return the sizes that don't fit. Maybe the other 59% of consumers just don't realize that this hack could save them from being disappointed. Sizes can vary vastly from company to company. You might have a size 8 dress from Banana Republic that fits you like a glove, but then not be able to fit into a size 8 dress from any other store. According to Lynn Boridi, an associate professor and chair of fashion and textile technology, the sizes that you see in stores are just random numbers. Most women end up feeling badly when something in their size doesn't fit properly. But Boorady says that we should blame the industry, not ourselves, whenever that happens. To save yourself from disappointment, just buy multiple sizes. It won't cost you anything and you'll help protect your self-esteem in the process. Shopping cart. Online shopping carts were created to hold all your items in one place until you're ready to check out. You know, just like real life shopping carts. But did you know that your online shopping cart can also help you get a discount on your purchase? All you have to do is abandon your online chart when it's full of the items that you want to buy. We know it sounds crazy, but this hack really does work. The idea behind this method is that the company wants you to make the purchase. Because of that, they will offer you a deal to rope you back into buying what was left in your cart. A couple of popular companies that are known to do this are Bed, Bath & Beyond, Urban Outfitters, and Levi's. Some companies will even offer you as much as 30% off if you use this trick. Like your mom always told you, patience truly is a virtue. To make sure that companies can notify you about a discount, you should always create an account with them before you start shopping. But we can't guarantee that something will happen every time you let items sit in your cart. You might just get an email reminding you that you haven't completed your purchase. However, we think that it's always worth a shot to see what happens. Tuesdays. One of the worst things to see after just making a purchase online is an email announcing a 40% flash sale. But if you listen to this next hack from the authors of How to Win at Shopping, you're likely to save more every time you shop. Because what's the point of shopping online if you're not saving a ton of money on your purchase, right? According to co-authors Ela Mel and David Zyla, Tuesday is the best day of the week to get your online shopping done. Research shows that this is the day of the week where you'll get the best discounts, followed closely by Thursdays and then Fridays. Research also also shows that Saturdays and Sundays are the worst times of the week to shop online. Tuesdays are also the best time to book a flight, since airfares tickets are generally cheaper. If you want to take advantage of sales that are only available for a limited period of time, you should make an effort to try to shop online in the morning. And if you've been eyeing a cute dress that's completely out of your budget, check back in on the price after six weeks. Prices usually go down after the item has been on the floor for six to eight weeks. Who knew that online shopping could be so technical? Junk mail. Signing up for special reward emails from your favorite clothing store sounds like a great idea in theory. They'll send you information about their upcoming deals and you'll be the first to know about their amazing sales. But it becomes less and less of a good idea once you realize how many emails they actually send you a week. Your personal email account will suddenly become overrun with ads. We're not sure why we never thought of this before, but an easy way to avoid this annoyance is to create a second email solely for your online shopping. This will help keep your really important emails separate from the emails that help fuel your shopaholic tendencies. And if you don't want to deal with having two separate accounts, we also have a tip that will keep your inbox clutter free. If you use Gmail, you can create a filter that makes all of your shopping emails to go straight into a folder titled shopping. It's relatively easy to create a filter, but if you're not super tech savvy, you can always look up a tutorial on Google. We love when our favorite stores send us promotions by email, but we just don't want to be bombarded by ads all the time. Ebates. What if we told you that shopping online 
online could actually make you some money. It may seem like we're making this up, but we swear that it's true. Ebates is a website that offers you cash back just for buying from stores that you already shop at. All you have to do is sign up for free and then make sure to shop from the selection of stores on their website. So if Target was offering 15% back on purchases made through Ebates, you would make $15 back for every $100 you spent. We don't know about you, but we think that it's always better to make a bit of cash back while shopping. You just need to remember to shop through ebates.com to be eligible for the cash back service. Shopping directly through a clothing store's website will not add a rebate to your Ebates account. That's because Ebates will not receive a commission if you do it that way. Ebates even offers you a $10 welcome bonus just for signing up. And when you're ready to cash out your reward money, you can ask them to send it to you by check or through PayPal. If you shop online a lot and are looking for an easy way to save some money, you need to sign up for Ebates today. Amazon Smile. We've been talking a lot about ways that you can save money while shopping online, but wouldn't it also be nice if you were able to give back to those in need? Amazon Smile allows you to do just that by donating a percentage of your Amazon purchase to a charity of your choice. Since you can find almost anything on Amazon these days, this shopping hack seems like a no-brainer. It'll take a while for your contributions to make an impact since they only donate 0.5% of your purchase, but anything is better than nothing, right? There are about 1 million charities to choose from, including the Red Cross and the A. SPCA. All you have to do is log into your Amazon account on smile.amazon.com and start shopping. You'll be offered the same products at the same price, but you'll feel better knowing that a portion of your money is going towards a good cause. If you spend $5,000 a year on Amazon purchases, you'll be donating $25 to your favorite charity. And if you ever want to change up who you're donating your money to, you can do so with just a click of a button. Did you already know about this Amazon shopping hack? If so, let us know what your charity of choice is in the comments below below that's all okay so what did you understand in this video hello buongiorno There was a, a lot of information in that video. Yeah. But, the, but the first, I was looking at the word hack. And I understand that is, uh, but 10 online shopping hacks, everyone should know. I think that is, uh, my God, it's like I, it's like if I buy online, I obtain gains. Is in that in that way? In this case, yes. A hack uh -huh. in general is when you yes, but because the 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 video or all the people are talking about discount. Yeah. For example, for example, they mentioned that all the store, all the store I understand, offering the 35% of that is true. So yeah, I had, they, uh, uh, they, they, sorry, <laughs> they, they give you, give they, they give you gift card and discounts, and they mention, um, how, they mention platforms to buy, and oh my god, they mentioned that the Tuesday, um. Is the day that uh, the companies have the best uh, discount? Tuesday? Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. 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 Uh -huh. Okay, Wednesday uh -huh, is the best day to buy. <laughs> yeah, buy because that. there are really, really and good discounts. Yeah, very good. Yeah, a hack in general is when you treat the system. When a hacker hacks in the system is because they they are able to vulnerate uh, the, the system. In this case, a hack is because you are going to, to get some money and you are going to save some money. So this is a shopping hack. When you, when you go and go around the system, so that is it. Very good, any other, any other thing, any other comments? That is interesting teacher um, in the other country that the online shopping 
is more um, common, more common, and the the customers are more. Do you say acostumbrados? Accustomed. Accustomed to to use the this way for for shopping and the companies requiring the specific strategy for for promotion because the the customers are um, a, have more knowledge about the how shopping how get the more benefits during the process of the shopping and the the process required the more control, more control, and it's necessary to, to because the, the, the process, there are a lot of risk because in general, the, the uh, e-commerce has a, a specific risk, risk uh, related to the, the, the translation. But it's interesting how, uh, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, the market in the other countries is more maturity related to the e commerce. Mm -hmm. That is true. Actually, in other countries, uh, there are many things that you can do and many things that you can buy. I mean, it's totally different. There is always a risk, uh, but what's very interesting about this video is that you can, you can get many ways for you to, to save money. I know that sometimes we really want to, to buy something. For example, the first example was uh, an extension that you can install into your Chrome browser, and you will get every 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 time that you purchase online, you have a a discount. So that is a very good thing. I mean. Uh, if you purchase, for example, in Amazon, you will be able to use that one and has save some money and send, even when the product is sent to El Salvador, you will be able to, to use it. And and the other one, go ahead. Or, or access to call for the discount, discount for a specific uh, purchase. But yes, in my, in my opinion, it's other level client teacher <laughs> because... <laughs> Uh, they have more experience about the process for purchase in shopping <laughs> in online. That is true. Actually, it's true. I mean, uh, this is more for shopaholics. I mean, sometimes the regular people will say, oh, I need a pair of pants. And you shop online and you buy and, and that's it, right? But there are people, they are, they are looking for, for good deals all the time. And I have a friend of mine, for example, he used to, he used to look on websites for airplanes, airplanes that are cheap. And sometimes he gets very good deals. Sometimes, I mean, he gets flights to South America in $150. And that is a very, very good deal. Of course, you need to be into that one. I mean, you need to go and be very, spend time researching, right? Uh, but that is the good thing about this kind of videos that you can, you can see what you can do. I mean, information is nowadays very easy to access. They mentioned something. Uh, it's like a, a truly passion is a virtue because I, I know that buying online you have to be patient, but the, your package is going to, you, you're going to receive your package about in three or four days. I don't know, maybe in two, but if I want something, I, I go to the store and I buy it and I have immediately because I, I don't believe that I will have a passion to, to weigh my package. <laughs> <laughs> that is true so there are many things that you can do actually what i do what i always do is the trick that they say that you go and shop and you put everything into the cart and i leave it there yeah. and 15 days after they say oh we have a discount in this product so would you like to purchase right now and then i purchase so it's a very good trick i, I always do that one when i'm going to buy 
from Amazon or AliExpress or any other. I leave the things in the cart and they give me a discount. That is for sure. Good. Anybody else have a comment or? Okay, this one, this video, uh, if you see the, the way that she speaks is very fast. But the good thing is that here below, there, there are the words. So you can practice in this one. You can go and try to read the words in the way that she reads, for example. Not only does Honey promo find promos for you, it can also earn so you cash back. It's a the good way you for you to practice line by line so you can try to check the pronunciation and things like that. So things like that you can do. Good, I have another video, but this is a different one. This is about grammar. Not grammar, but this is about pronunciation. So I know that uh, now we know that there are different kinds of pronunciation and this is just for the ED in simple past tense. So we're going to check about this one uh, and then pay attention on the way or, or the tips that my girlfriend here says. Uh, <laughs> How you, how you pronounce <laughs> today today i was look i was watching i was watching yeah i was watching some of these videos and it's very oh my god it's very important it's very nice uh, the way that you learn to pronounce i was alone at the office because my uh, my partners are were in another place and i and aloma i was um, repeating you know i say oh my god nice <laughs> it's very nice it's very nice it's a good it's a good uh, how do you say truco uh, trick it's a good trick yeah definitely so, i mean yeah yeah really really this help help so much i mean uh technology nowadays is a good deal i mean yes. you can download applications that helps you to improve your pronunciation to help you writing. There are many things that you can do. So if you yes. really, if you really want to learn very good English, yes. there are many things that you can do. I know time is difficult because we have our jobs, our family, our friends, many things that we do. But I mean, 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, if you have the chance, it's going to be good. Also in the, also in the social media, there are, there are pages about English in, and I follow this page. And suddenly appears a video, and and I I look at and I learn something. That's yeah, the way. That's the way. So <laughs> now I I found this a little video, and we're going to check into that one. So let's pay attention on the tricks on how you are going to pronounce the simple past tense words. Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I have a pronunciation lesson for you. Please remember that I'm teaching RP, Received Pronunciation. I love it when students come to me with what seems to them to be a massive problem, but I have a really quick, easy solution. And that's what I have for you today. I am going to teach you how to pronounce Words like these, words that end in ed, because it's not so straightforward. We have wanted, danced, and saved. Wanted, danced, saved. So there are three different ways that we pronounce ed at the end of a word. And there are so many words that end with ed. We have the regular past simple verbs, we have the regular past perfect verbs, and we have many adjectives. So it's a bit frustrating that we have three different ways of pronouncing ed at the end of words, but I have a very simple <laughs> trick that you can use to instantly know whether you end the word with id, whether you end it with or whether you end it with d, id, t, d. Before we get started, I want to tell you about something very exciting, something that I have been working on for years, <laughs> over you to put into practice what you've learned. It's a bit of a challenge, so let's see how you do. And as always, I have created a free PDF document for you to use alongside and after this lesson. To download that, click on the link in the description box and it will be sent straight to your email address. Let's take a look at some root words. 
we have part, end, test, and need. All of these end in t or d. So you're going to notice with this method, it all depends on how the root word ends. With which phoneme or sound does it end? In this case, t and d, which are nearly always represented by the letter t or the letter d. If a root word ends in t or d, the ed is pronounced as id. This means that it adds on an extra syllable. Part, parted, end, ended, test, tested, need, needed. That is the easy part, but what if a root word does not end with t or d? Well, does it end with a vowel, a voiced consonant, or an unvoiced consonant? If the root word ends with a vowel sound, or with a voiced consonant sound, then the root word ends with voice, meaning that when you produce that last phoneme, you can feel the vibrations in your throat. If it ends with an unvoiced consonant, you cannot feel the vibrations in your throat. Look at these four root words. We have dine. Grammarly hace más que detectar errores. Con Grammarly encuentras palabras buenas. Love, comply, remember, dine, I can feel the vibration, love, I can feel the vibration, comply, that ends with a vowel sound, and remember, still with voice, remember that in received pronunciation, if a word ends with R, the R is not pronounced. In American English, you might say remember, er, but in received pronunciation, remember, uh, all of these root words end with voice. And the great thing is that we match voice with voice. If a word ends with voice, apart from d, then we match it with voice. So we add d onto the end. Loved, dined, complied, remembered. It would actually be more difficult to use t at the end because you're moving from voiced to unvoiced, dined. Okay, so moving on to the root words that end with an unvoiced consonant. Take a look at these four. We have clap, kick, dance, and wash. P, k, s, sh. None of the endings have voice in them. Just like we matched voiced with voiced before, we match unvoiced with unvoiced. So in this case, ed is pronounced as t, clapped, kicked, danced, washed. Try ending these words with the d sound. In my opinion, it's a lot more difficult. So that's the theory behind it all looking at the last sound in the root word and then working out what the next sound should be. With root words that end in any sound yeah, pues. other than t and d, you had the time. there is no extra syllable. Love is not loved or loved, yeah, it's loved. Kicked isn't kicked or kicked, it's kicked. No extra syllable. But decide is decided, extra syllable. Test is tested, extra syllable. Some students prefer to learn words through studying them in lists, and other students prefer to hear them spoken and to practice, to learn them in practice. We're going to go through both ways of learning them. First, let's look at the list version, and then I will tell you a story using the words, and you have to guess what the pronunciation is. Here are the sounds that come before id as ed, t, wanted, d, decided, and here we have the sounds that come before d as ed. We have b as in robbed, v as in lived, z as in amazed, g 
as in rigged, n as in find, n as in climbed, n as in winged, j as in judged, v as in soothed, o as in called. And then I've included R just so you know for American English pronunciation that it would be followed by D. For RP, it isn't pronounced. Remembered. Remembered. It's pronounced with a D because it ends with a schwa vowel sound which is voiced. But in American English, the R is pronounced at the end of words and it would sound something like remembered. Remembered. Then we have the sounds that come before as ed, the unvoiced sounds. We have p as in helped, f as in sniffed or laughed, s as in missed or danced, k as in asked. I know some of my students struggle with that sound, the combination of s k t, asked, asked. We have ch as in matched, sh as in washed, th as in unearthed. There aren't many ed words with the th at the end of the root word. Now this rule also applies to adjectives but there are many more exceptions. So some adjectives ending in t or d we have insulted or beaded, Adjectives ending in a voiced consonant or a vowel. We have soothed or moved and unvoiced consonants. Distressed, astonished. There are lots of irregular adjectives that don't follow this rule and they favour id at the end. Naked, wicked, jagged, rugged. There is normally a g or k sound at the end of the root word, but there are exceptions to the exceptions. For example, beloved. Okay, now it is time for the activity. I am going to read a story to you. It's filled with words that end in ed, and each time I reach a word that ends in ed, I'm going to stop for a couple of seconds to give you the chance to say how you think it might be pronounced, what ending you think it might have. Count your scores and see how many you get right. Share your results in the comment section. As I've told you before, I loved living in Seville. I always envisioned myself living there long term. I had also lived in Madrid, but for some reason Seville really inspired me. It had nearly everything I wanted, so I promised to myself that I would move there in the future. I moved back to the UK to finish my studies. When I finished, I rented a room from my parents and started my teaching business. One day I was invited to a New Year's Eve party. I didn't want to go, but I pushed myself. I noticed a very handsome man there, but we mostly ignored each other the whole night. One day, this man messaged me and asked me if I would participate in a charity dating show that he had organised. I 
responded with a yes and prepared for the event. In the end, that man won a date with me and I postponed my plans to move to Seville. Eventually, I simply cancelled them. I discovered that home is not a place, it's a person. I have visited Seville every year since and that's enough for me. True story. <laughs> That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget you can get all of today's lesson notes and the full activity and lots of extra examples by clicking on the link in the description box. You enter your email address and it will be sent straight to your inbox. If you're... Okay, so what did you learn from the video? Did you learn how to pronounce that the each, each regular verb teacher have the specific uh, specific pronunciation depending different rules, but they have exception too. <laughs> That is true, there are many exceptions. And you can see here that in English, the most important thing is, is the, the sound, the way that you pronounce words. So it's not how you're gonna write it, it's more how you say the words. And based on that one, you will find uh, the rules for the pronunciation. Teacher, in this case, it's different the pronunciation, the British with the American. Some words are different, some words. Not all of those, mm -hmm. but some words, yeah. For example, remember, uh, there in England, they say remember. They don't say the R, but in the U.S. they say remember. Good, any other comment? So it's a good idea for you to try to practice this. The simple past tense in regular verbs is one of the most difficult things for people that speak Spanish. Um, if we are trying to, to speak in, sometimes we, we do not pronunciate that correctly. So remember that if, uh, if you don't say the words correctly, the other person, they don't speak Spanish, so they don't understand. They might get an idea on what you're talking about, but it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. So it's a good idea for you to try to practice these kind of things, okay? It's very important. Okay, so we have a few more minutes and we're going to do free practice today. Okay, let's see who's gonna be the first one. Uh, let's see, Ada Patricia. Yes, teacher. Hello, how are you? Fine, teacher. Very nice. I'm Did... tired. Yeah, it's tired at this time, right? But anyways, you'd almost go to bed. That's good. So tell me, there are at your, near your house or there at home, uh, there was any power outage today? It's good. Was Excuse there me. any power outage near your home? Ah, uh, yes, teacher. Um, um, a power is more, more or less one hour, right? One hour, in my mind, there is a lot of time. And what about the internet connection? Was good the internet connection? Yes. Okay. I remember once the power, I had a power outage as well at six and I was so worried. Oh my goodness, the class I was saying. <laughs> but it came back around 7.20. So I had the time. 
so I was very worried because I, I didn't want to miss the class. In mind, the teacher don't come to the class. That's not. <laughs> okay, and uh, is that uh, is that something that often happens there in, in San Salvador near your house? Repeat the question. Yeah, is that the power outage is something that happens kind of often there? near your house? Okay. So is it often? Oh. I don't understand, teacher. Do you remember what is often? When we say how often is frequency? Mouse. So it happens a lot? Um, no, teacher, no, 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 of ah, okay, so it's not that common. That's very good. What about the internet connection? Uh, is very stable the, the internet connection near your home? Yes, it's nice, it's nice. Which company are you with? Um, Tigo. I have Tigo. Sometimes it's very slow, but the good thing is that it almost never goes off. But sometimes it's very slow. Is your internet slow or is fast? It's, it's fast. Mm, okay. Maybe I need to check some things over here. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Ada Patricia. Yeah. Good. Let's see who else, uh, who sells uh, the next. Guadalupe. Hello, teacher. Hello, how are you? Well, very well. Very nice. Did you have dinner already? Yes. Nice, yes. very good. I ate pupusas. Oh, pupusas are <laughs> very good. I'm hungry already. <laughs> what are your favorite kind of pupusas? Um, the different uh, mora, I like the mora. Oh, I like moras. Yeah, mora yes, chicken. The cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried tongue pupusas? Mm. I understand, teacher. Tongue. Do you know mm -hmm. what is tongue? No. No. Uh -huh. No. You never tried. What about mushrooms, pupusas? No. Never tried mushrooms? No. Okay. What is the, the craziest pupusa you have ever eaten? Um, the shrimp. Shrimps. Oh, mm -hmm. shrimps are, are good. I like <laughs> shrimps. Yeah. And do you like hot sauce with your pupusas? Yes. Ah, it's I, really it. good. I really <laughs> like hot sauce. Chili is one of my favorite things. Of course, it's not for all the foods, but it's something that is very important. Nice. And when you eat pupusas, what what do you usually have for drink? Um, mm, coffee. Coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you drink a lot of soda? Um. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite soda? Uh, Coca Cola. Coke. Okay. Very good. Perfect. And uh, can you cook pupusas? Mm. Yes. Okay. That's good. It's not that often, I guess, but it's it's good that you mm -hmm. can cook. Very nice. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Guadalupe. Okay, teacher. Let's see. Um, who else is going to be the next? Uh -oh. Mayra. Yes, teacher. Hello, how are you? Very good. Thank you. Very nice. Did you have power outage staying in your house today? Yes. 
Hold yes, on. I have a problem. Um, when I came from my house, uh, I don't have an uh, energy, but it returned around 720. <clears throat> 720 was good enough, very good. And yes. uh, uh, what can I ask you? Let me think. Mm -hmm. Let's change that. Let's change things. Now you are going to ask me. Let's see how it goes. Um, okay, teacher. Um, do you take a dinner for today? Yes, you know, I'm like a very old man. I, I always have dinner around 5.30 or 6. <gasps> it's very early. Very early, yeah. And uh, I get used to it, maybe because of the classes, because I turn on the computer around 7 and I get everything ready. So at that time, I have to be ready for the class and I need to finish my, my dinner. Okay. Um, at what time do you go to bed? I go to bed around midnight. <gasps> midnight, okay. Yeah, because I have to upload the videos and check some other details on the class. Okay, do you work in the morning? I work during the day, but not teaching classes. I work for Google and um, I, I start my day, uh, well, we, we start at eight and I finish at six uh, in Google. So yeah, I work a lot. These days it's been crazy. Okay, okay. Mm, I don't have an, any other question. Okay, very good job. Very nice, Maida, thank you. Thank you too, teacher. Okay, let's see who's next for the free practice. Do, 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 do. Walter Mauricio. Hello, teacher. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. It's uh, the problem connection. Is the internet is very bad. Really? But only today or always? No, only today. Only today. Okay, that's good. That's good. Maybe. Yes. There were some problems. You know, when the energy uh, energy goes out, when there is an oh, outage, yes. Yes. sometimes there are problems in companies and they disconnect many things. So they cause a lot of problems. And never the country. Yeah, I, I heard that it was in many places. I don't know. Oh, yes. Okay. And um, uh, let me think. Uh, can you cook? Yes. What is the the dish that you can cook that you believe is the most delicious that you can cook. Oh my God. And the, how do you say ceviche de camarón? <laughs> oh, that is a, a shrimp cocktail. You can say that. Okay. And shrimp cocktail for me is delicious. Oh, oh my nice. God. Yes. I can uh, eat uh, a Saturday, uh, Sunday. No problem for me. <laughs> that is very good, very good. Yes. And uh, yes, uh, it's, I mean, one, one of my favorite foods is the, the seafood. So definitely that should be very, very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the sauce, the mariscada, oh my God. Soup is very good, yes. And you can put some, uh, some crab. Uh, and my family and me, uh, I like to the beach, the beach and one, for a month. Really? Once a month? Um, so, yeah, nice. for a month or, or, or different the restaurant. For example, ¿Cómo se llama? En la Ruta Panorama, pero un lugar bien bonito también. Excuse me. Ah, okay. So do you, oh, you, yes, don't, yes. you don't remember no, the name? Yeah. Ah, yes, I remember. I don't remember. Ah, you need uh, to share that. The food is the food is good and the price is good. That is a very good deal. So please remember oh, yes. the name and tell us in the future. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And what is your favorite beach? What is your favorite beach? Beach. 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 Oh, yeah. And uh, Puerto Libertad. <laughs> That's your favorite. Okay, good. Yes, 
in the in the in the Plaza Marinera. Oh. It's the it's a good food. It's excellent. It's money is a uh, barato teacher. Cheap. Cheat. Ah, okay, it's the cheat. Okay. And, very good. <laughs> and how long how long does it take for you to get to the beach? Tell me. How long does it take for you to, to take to the beach, to go to the beach? To go, uh, how long? How long? So when we say how long is about time, how much time does it take uh, for you from your home to the beach? Uh, previous is uh, for the later is uh, uh, 1 p.m. On Saturday uh, for Sundays. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And do you go just one day or two days? Oh, one day. One day. Yes. What is a good hotel in the beach that is nice and it's not that expensive? Do you know? In hotel, I don't remember names. Okay. It's a hotel, Pacific Paradise. Pacific Paradise. Ah, I never yeah, been there. It's good. Okay. Yeah. It's I need the, to research. Tell me, tell me. Yeah, I need to research on that one as I was going to say. Yes. It's Very good. good. Perfect. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome, teacher. And the last one, Carla Vasquez. Hello, teacher. How are you today? I am fine. Very good. You know that you have the same last name as, as me. My second last name is Vasquez. Ah, really? Yeah. You are my cousin. <laughs> You're cousins. Very good. <laughs> and have you always lived in San Salvador? You live in San Salvador, right? No, I live in La Libertad at Zaragoza. Oh, yeah, it's true. Good for Sara. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, have you always lived there in, in La Libertad? Hey, what? Have you always lived in La Libertad? Ah, okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I have... 12 years I live in Libertad. Um, after I live in Ilopango. So with before my you lived in, yeah. ah, okay. And why did you move, uh, may I ask you? When I, when I was married. Ah, okay, very good. So you decided to move on. Yes. And do you work there in La Libertad? No, I work at San Salvador. Okay, but it's not that far away, right? No, no, I, the 80% of time I work at, uh, at home. That is a very good deal. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer to work at home, definitely. I never tried that before, you know, but now that I work at home, it's amazing, it's fantastic. Uh, yes, yes, I, Normally, I go to the office once or three times a week. Uh, there, there are with uh, no, no go to the office. It's very nice because I work at my, at my home. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, you know. It's, I mean, I, I spend more time with my son. I, I have lunch with him. I can cook. I, I mean, I finish <laughs> my job and I'm here already. So that is <laughs> not traffic. Yeah. Just, that is amazing. yes, is is the best. No traffic. <laughs> yeah, that is the best. Of course, sometimes I miss to to speak with people, you know, because in the office or I mean here in the at work, you are just speaking by chat or video conference. But sometimes mm. it's a good idea to go and have a coffee with somebody. So that was good. Yeah. This part, this part, yes, I miss because 
it's very difficult to work in the office because you don't have contact with other, other partners. And I miss take a, a coffee with, with a coworker, talk uh, about any topic or news inclusive. Um, but I finally is part of the of the model to to work that is very true very true perfect thank you carla it was a pleasure thank you you too okay my friends we have finished already and we're going to check the attendance so we can finish the class the one one for today is for pamela so please stay pamela okay Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Carmen Yasmin Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rosa, Ele ah, okay. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Present Mauricio. Oh, good. Walter Present. Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Zulma Rosaura López García. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Good night. Good night. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Yeah, yeah. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Tomorrow is Thursday and we have class. So rest very well tonight. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Hello, how are you? Hello. Um, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, how are you today? Very tired. That's okay. Yeah. That's kind of, well, this way from my work, I guess could be more tired. Yeah, because the, 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 the work will be more difficult on this time because we have an exportation. So uh, that will be a, like a protocol and, and yeah, and different situation that they can order. Yeah, I, I feel that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. Sometimes it's very difficult because there are too many things to do. I know that it's also difficult to come to the English class because of course there are, yeah. you want to sleep or maybe go out with friends, but it's good because we're learning and we're practicing. So that is very nice. Yeah. Oh, you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. Um, well, I don't have any question right now. I continue 
uh, do the exercise because I'm a little later with that. But, um, and I see some uh, classmates that ask for a question that I have in that, in on this time, but, uh, well, I, I, Um, at least a kind of uh, maybe a confusion, so confusion uh, that the the exercise sometimes because uh, we are um, we are combined as a past with the present and how uh, of a third person that the person asks. Uh, well, it's a kind of complicated, but only needs need a practice, right? Because the exercise help and well, you do a uh, more exercise on classes about it. But when you, I I try to think in English, it's a kind of um, it's not too easy to do it. Uh, I need more. Uh, time sometimes but uh yeah i don't have any question very good yes actually that is true we need more practice maybe mm -hmm. in the class the the problem is that we need to move on we need to check some other things and you yeah. are right this grammar is kind of complicated because it's something that we don't use i mean it's mm -hmm. it's totally different right we use it in spanish but in a different way mm -hmm. so Probably that is uh, where the problem is. But if you, uh, I was telling yesterday to somebody that I, I was, I will going, I will, I will send some exercises uh, for you to mm -hmm. practice them. So you just open the link and practice that. I know that that is the most complicated thing that we have checked during this uh, module, but it's just a matter for you to practice. If you practice, if you have the time to practice in some way, then you will be, you will be fine. And your English level, I mean, is, is fine. So. You just need to, to practice those little details and then you will be able to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, maybe uh, I need more vocabulary about, yeah, also the grammar and the, the correct way to ask or some sentences, but uh, sometimes I a little bit, uh, a little short with the, with the, idea because I didn't remember the, the exact uh, word to use it. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, but just remember, but there are different formulas depending on what you are using. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's just a reported speech or if it's a just no question or if it's a, an information question, it's going to change the formula. But mm -hmm. if you learn that formula and you try to practice, then you will remember and you will be fine. I, I know that one. I love your your nails. They are always <laughs> thank you, but it, I, they are short right now. I, I was checking that. <laughs> yeah, I could have because uh well I sometimes when I I worried about it, I couldn't oh sometimes my dog when I play with the with him, uh yeah, they saw some did he do some uh, moves that there are maybe a, a kind of a, could, could maybe he can play a little, uh, he can play as, as well, but uh, well, we have some problems with the, with he, with, with the, um, but yeah, I, I put it. But it's fantastic always, uh, okay. that's nice. <laughs> of course. Okay, Pamela, do you have any other question, any other comment before we finish? Uh, no, 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 really no, don't have. Uh, you know, I only really, I need more practice, but my, for, my, for myself, uh, and, yeah, I check the book right at the same time when I do the exercise in the in the platform because 
sometimes they also they have the formula in the in the all that kind of um, important things for do the um, they put the order of the sentences of the of the question, but only that I don't have any question. Very good, Pamela. So it was a pleasure, uh, not only talking but watching you. And <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah. I'm very happy. So, um, well, if you have questions, remember that you can chat with me directly, or you yeah. can chat with me on the group, or in the class you can ask any question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's Good a pleasure. Night. Good night. Bye-bye now.